Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce this year's keynote speaker, Mr. Steve Crawford. Steve is a graduate of Mansfield University from the class of 1981. While attending Mansfield, Steve was a student of the Political Science Department. Steve is an outstanding individual who has dedicated his life's work to public service. Steve began his career in legislative relations as a director of government relations for one of the largest trade associations in the state, the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau. Steve also previously served in administration of Governor Robert P. Casey. He firstly served on the executive staff of the state's House of Representatives before moving over to the governor's office. Mr. Crawford is now the managing vice president of SR Wojak and Associates, one of the most prestigious and long-lasting government relation firms in Pennsylvania. His firm represents Fortune 500 companies, medical institutions, and nonprofit art and cultural institutions. The firm is also proud to represent the Motion Picture Association of America, Microsoft, Drexel, Temple, Scranton, and Wilkes Universities also the American Red Cross, as well as the Pennsylvania State Police. Steve Crawford never loses touch with his alma mater. Steve currently serves as the Vice Chairman to the Mansfield University Council of Trustees. Steve is an inspiring model of an outstanding, professional, and knowledgeable individual who achieved his fullest potential first starting at Mansfield University. Steve shows all of us what true success can come from small liberal art institutes but most importantly, the success that can be achieved by being a graduate from Mansfield University of Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you Mansfield University's 150th commencement keynote speaker, Mr. Steve Crawford, class of 1981. Well, here we are. Here we are. Mr. President, my fellow members of the Council of Trustees, distinguished faculty, students, soon-to-be graduates, family, friends, and loved ones. It is impossible for me not to stand before you today and think about my own experiences at this university, how it welcomed me, how it shaped me, and prepared me for a career, a career in public service that I could never have dared imagine when I was here. Today is not about me. Today is surely not about me. Today is about this milestone in your life and the dreams that lie ahead for you. But please indulge me for just two moments as I share two important stories at the front end and the back end of my career. The day my parents dropped me off in 1977, <clears throat> 1977, <laughs> I stood under a big tree in front of Cedar Crest Dormitory. My mom hugged me goodbye while my dad kicked the ground. She had tears in our eyes, and I was pretty nervous myself. All this college stuff was new to me, and it was new to my family because I was a first generation college student straight out of Millville, Pennsylvania. And my world was so, so small. I was unsure, I was unsophisticated, and yes, I was a little scared, kind of like now. Fast forward to another moment in time, January 20th of 2011. On that morning, almost exactly four years ago now, I was set to leave the governor's office. The new governor was being inaugurated that day, and I had just completed eight years as the Secretary for Legislative Affairs and Chief of Staff to the governor. On that day, I called my wife Kristen over to my office. I shut the door, and I began to cry. I wasn't sad. I wasn't sad at all. I was simply overwhelmed with the thought that I had just, ca just capped off a 26-year career in public service. And I simply couldn't believe it. And I reached the pinnacle of the unelected position that you could reach in state government. I'd gone from a kid under the tree to a position entrusted with enormous responsibility. 
And part of those tears were from relief because I didn't screw it up too badly. <laughs> what happened in the 35 years between those two moments isn't terribly relevant to you today because you're going to write your own story, full of your own challenges and your own triumphs. But as you fill those chapters, you will have one important thing in common with me. We are fellow Mounties. We are mountaineers, graduates of one of the best and best valued universities in this Commonwealth. You now possess an education that can be the basis from which to compete with anyone. And how do I know? Because I did it. All that I have accomplished in my professional career, in my professional life, was realized with the same level of degree that you will, hold, you will now hold. In my case, it was a bachelor's degree in political science, otherwise known as anything but math courses, please. <laughs> you will leave here today with the same academic qualifications that have carried me through, with one big difference. You, so, you most certainly have a GPA that was higher than mine. Know this. You have the skills to compete and succeed with any Ivy Leaguer out there. The biggest difference between them and us is the size of our debt. Now, in fairness, I shouldn't be too hard on those guys, the big shots from the big schools with the big debt, because they do make great staff. As you leave here today, I wanted to provide you with some practical advice. And then I'm going to give you a bit of an admonition. Practically speaking, here are the, th the few things that I've learned along the way that I think might help you as you blaze your own trail. You know, President Hendricks and I went to Mansfield at a time when there were no cell phones, no Instagram, no Facebook. It's a good thing. It's a very good thing. But you did. Clean up your act. Clean up your Twitter, your Facebook page, your Instagrams, all that stuff. Because you live in the world of permanence. Those things never landed anybody a job. But they surely have cost many the jobs of their dreams. For your first, for your first job, second job, maybe third job, it may not be exactly what you want it to be. It may, not, it may not be what you had in mind. But remember this, you work for yourself. That means how you conduct yourself, your demeanor, your work ethic, the way you treat your peers is always on display. And it is the observation deck from which you will build a bigger and better career. Brianna Walker, this one's for you. Act like you belong. As you enter the professional world, you have no excuse for arrogance, but every reason for confidence. Establish a presence without being pushy. You will find yourself in professional settings where you think the truth fairs are going to come down and point at you in the room and say, what are you doing here? Trust me, we've all had that feeling. I have it right now. Nobody goes it alone. So don't be afraid to say, I need some advice or I could really use your help. You're going to be surprised that most people like to talk about themselves, and they'll remember when they were in your shoes, and will generally want to help you and even mentor you. Finally, I came from a very small high school, very small. There were 79 kids in my graduating class. I came to Mansfield, and everybody thought I went to a private prep school. No, no, I didn't. In Millville, everybody looks like everybody else. Everybody has the same background, the same point of view on the world. Mansfield taught me tolerance. It taught me about diversity. I learned that not everyone in the world shared my background, my experiences, my beliefs, or my outlook on the world. Celebrate diversity and appreciate tolerance. This has been an enormous help to me throughout my career, throughout my life. And now the admonition. See, I get to give this speech for free, but you don't. 
They'll get to listen to it for free. In a few short minutes, you will be a graduate of a public university. What does that mean, a public university? It means that along with your loved ones and everyone else here today who isn't wearing a cap and gown, they have invested, the citizens of the Commonwealth have invested in your education. Right alongside you and all your loved ones, people you have never met have invested in your future. Yes, they help pay for it. As a society, we have placed a value on education, on your education. Our collective resources helped us set the stage for an opportunity for you, an opportunity that many in the rest of the world could never dream of. So now it's up to you to earn it. What you do from this point forward will determine whether your college degree is priceless or worthless. I believe you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to take this education beyond the confines of your chosen discipline, to use it for a common good. I implore you to go forward and from here and involve yourself. Involve yourself as learned, aware, and contributing members of society. Treasure this degree, treasure it for sure, but know that it's a gift that too many in our country and in our world find far, far out of reach. And the social cost to that denial of a quality education is enormous to all of us. At home, the lack of education too often results and presents itself in our correction system as our prison population bulges at its serpentine wired seams. Elsewhere in the world, the, den the, den the denial of an education, particularly to girls, is used as the ultimate tool of oppression. Malala Yousafzai of Pakistan knows that, what that means, and so should you. You are very, very fortunate. So let me suggest to you that it would be hypocritical for you to take this education, then shun the very system that allowed you or helped you to receive it in the first place. That means involve yourself in your town, in your state, in your nation. Involve yourself in public affairs, and dear God, yes, even politics. And I will tell you that I have lived this world, and I have seen that public policy is influenced by the participant far before and better than it is by the powerful. It's the lack of participation that results in an inordinate power to the few. You need to register and vote. It's painfully obvious that not enough young people register to vote. Now, this is the part of my speech where I was going to call you stupid if you didn't register to vote. But Kristen, my wife, said that's not a good idea. You should take that out. <laughs> the easy thing to do is turn your back. Say, what can I do? What can I really do? Can I really make a difference? But I swear to you, it will be to your detriment and to ours. We need you. Everything in life that you do, everything in life that we do, is affected in some way, shape, or form by public affairs and by government. Everything. Elections matter. They have consequences. I've been in the smallest of rooms making the biggest of decisions. And if a shaky kid from Millville can throw himself into that and make all the difference, then you can too. I worked for my first governor when I was 27 years old. His name was Bob Casey. He used to say to us, conduct yourself in your work and in your life so that when the time comes and someone asks, what did you do when you had the power? You can answer with a clear conscience and a full heart. That is what I wish for you. Time flies, and there will all too soon come a time when you will be in my position. And that question may be asked of you. Your own answer lies ahead. Think about what you will say. Think hard about what you will do with this gift, with this responsibility. Because guess what, my fellow Mountaineers? You do have the power, starting today. 
I need to end with a heartfelt thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your special day. You see, back in 1981, in December of 1981, I did not attend my college graduation. So my presence here today is much more important to me than it is to you. So when I say, here we are, here we finally are. Godspeed and go Mounties.